Hello students, today I am going to talk on a topic called as classless IP addressing or also known as CIDR where CIDR stands for classless interdomain routing. So we will try to understand why there was a need to develop classless IP addressing or CIDR just because of many limitations of classful IP addressing. We know very well classful IP addressing means different classes of IP address. Basically there are five classes of IP address starting from class A, B, C and D. So what are the limitations of classful IP addressing? The first and foremost limitation is running out of the address space soon. What does it mean? As we know very well, the length of the IP address, when we talk about IP, fee, IP version 4, it is 32 bit length. So 2 raised to 32 possible IP address are there, which will be extinguished as soon as possible. The reason, in today's world, we are dealing with IoT, Internet of Things, wherein each device which is associated with the network will be requiring an IP address. So to satisfy the over increasing demand of the IP address, so this is a big limitation for the classful IP address. The second limitation, class boundaries did not foster efficient allocation of address space, which means there is less flexibility in classful IP address. The reason, if you remember, in classful IP addressing, the network ID and host ID bits are fixed depending upon whether it is class A, B or C. So here there is very less flexibility and as per our need, we cannot set how many bits we will need for a network or how many bits we need it for host. The third limitation is <coughs> lack of address class to support medium size company. So try to understand with the help of example over here. Class B, if you are dealing with class B, 65,534 hosts are possible per network. So it is too large that in a network 65,000 computers will be fitted. If you use class C, Per network, 254 hosts are possible, but they are too small to satisfy the requirement of medium sized company. So, which to be used? We can't use class B, the reason it is too big. We can't use class C because it is too small. Then, we need to use multiple class C address, but it will increase the complexity of the routing table. So, this is a major limitation or the drawback of the classful IP addressing. So there was a need to develop some technique called as classless IP addressing. So basically classless IP addressing also supports subnetting. So about the subnetting we have already talked about wherein subnetting is the process to divide a large or a big network into smaller network for ease of access. So for example over here there is a big network, university network, wherein in the university network there are three networks. One for engineering school, one for medical school and one for library. So here there is a division of a big network. But for the outside world it will appear only one network. But inside it will be sub-networks. That means a large network would be divided into small network. And another level of hierarchy to the IP addressing structure, this is called as subnetting. Why it is saying to add another hierarchy? Because over here there is three level hierarchy. First bits would be network ID or it is also said as network prefix. Next is the subnet ID also said as subnet number and the third host number also said as host ID. Subnets can be freely assigned 
within the organization. So depending upon how many subnetworks we need, we can freely assign the subnet number. Internally, subnets are treated as separate networks. As I told you, internally, they would be treated as a separate network. So here in this example, internally, they would be treated as three different networks. But this subnet structure is not visible to the outside organization, which means internally, even though they are divided for the outside world, it would be appear as a single network. So this is a very good advantage of subnetting wherein the internal network would be treated as a separate network but for the outside world it would appear as a one single network. Advantage of subnetting With subnetting IP address uses three layer hierarchy starting from network ID, subnet ID and host ID. It improves the efficiency of IP address by not consuming an entire address space for each physical network. It reduces router complexity. Since external routers do not know about subnetting, the complexity of routing tables at external routers is reduced. <clears throat> because external router is just concerned with a single network. They are not into how many sub-networks are there within a network, so which reduces the router complexity. Now we will try to understand what do you mean by classless IP addressing. Please remember classless IP addressing is also said to be CIDR which means classless interdomain routing. So the process of giving the classes IP is also called as CIDR. It was announced in the year 1996, allows an internal service provider to assign as few or as many IP addresses as requested. So basically in classless IP addressing, here as there was a drawback in case of classful IP address, the medium size company was facing the problem. Why? Because class B provides large IP addresses while class B, class C IP address provide small. But if you are dealing with classless IP address, as per the requirement of medium sized company, we can set how many IP addresses or how many hosts will be required in a network. So this kind of a flexibility is being provided in classless IP addressing by setting up the prefix length over here. So these are the two terms which appears in CIDR or classless prefix length. So what does it mean? Prefix, another name for the common part of the address range to be specific network ID. The prefix length means the length of the prefix. So what does it mean? Slash 15 over here. Slash 15 means as we know very well the total length of the IP address is of 32 bits. Slash 15 means the first 15 bits are nothing but assigned to the network ID and remaining remaining 17 bits would be given for the host ID. So this slash this prefix length we can control as per our requirement. So this is variable. That's the reason CIDR is also said to be VLSM variable length subnet masking. So depending upon the company requirement, we can select how many network ID bits to be set and how many host ID bits to be set, which was not the case in case of classful IP addressing. In classless addressing, the last address in the block does not necessarily end with 255. In CIDR, the block granted is defined by the first address and the prefix length. When an organization is granted a block of addresses, it can create subnets to meet its need. The prefix length increases to define the subnet prefix length. In fixed length subnetting, 
the number of subnet is a power of 2. So this point is concerned with classical IP address, which was a drawback of classical IP address. And this point is nothing but the advantage of classless IP addressing. <laughs> this is a table for subnet mask table. If you look carefully, this colored part slash 8, slash 16 and slash 24 is nothing but the subnet mask of class A which is slash 8, slash 16 is nothing but for class B and slash 24 is nothing but for class C. So depending upon the slash, how many network bits we need, CIDR is also said to be slash notation. So what do you mean by slash over here? Slash 1 indicates only one would be assigned, one bit would be assigned for network ID and remaining bit would be for the host ID. And this is a decimal equivalent of it. What do you mean by class slash 8? First 8 bits would be assigned for network ID and remaining for the host ID. So likewise it may go to slash 32. Slash 32 means what? All the bit would be 1 and which would turn out to be 255.255.255.255. <laughs> Lastless addressing system is also known as CIDR, Classless Interdomain Routing. Classless addressing is a way to allocate and specify the internet address used in interdomain routing more flexibly than the original system of IP address. What happened in the classful addressing is that if any company needs more than 254 host machine but far fewer than 65,000 then only option for the company is to take class B. So if you take class B address what is the drawback that let's say if a company needs 1000 IP address so class B will pro provide 65,533 and we need only 1000 so this much IP address would get wasted. For this reason internet was until the arrival of CIDR running out of address space much more quickly than necessary. So due to classful IP addressing wastage of IP address was taking place but which was overcome by the classless IP address. CIDR effectively solved the problem by providing a new and more flexible way to specify the network addresses in the routers. So we'll try to understand with the help of example. So in this example, the network address itself 15 says, so this part is the prefix and very very important slash notation says that the first 15 bits are the network part of the address that means network bits and remaining 17 bits are for the host address. One more advantage of classless addressing is that classless protocol sets subnet information. This allows you to create discontinuous networks with any given classful network address. How classless IP addressing helps? Consider a network that contains 9 hosts. Only 4 bits of host suffix are needed to represent all the possible host values. However, class C address has names for 256 hosts. Which means, if you are using class full, we will get 256 but we need only 9. Rest of the IP address would get wasted. Right? Now, this is an, a diagram which indicates, let's say if you talk about slash 28. So, 28 bits would be for network ID. And remaining 4 bits would be for host ID. So 2 raised to 4 which is 16. So 16 possible IP address would be assigned. But out of that 16, first IP address and the last IP address would be for reserved for let's say first address for network and the last IP address for broadcast. So remaining 14 IP address would be used for the host. Likewise if you see any Let's say 2 raised to 6, the combination would be more, right? Uh, 2 raised to 8, here would be 8 bits, right? 24 bits for network and 8 bits. So 2 raised to 8, but 256 out of 256, always there would be minus 2. 
थैंक यू